Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to talk about five of the most overrated legendaries that were released in the Ungoro expansion set, which is surprising that there are so many, because by the looks of things on the surface, everybody was getting so hyped up about quests, thinking that quest decks would be absolutely amazing, and a couple of them were. Uh, but for the vast majority of the legendaries, they actually weren't that much different than the original or the previous sets, uh, because a lot of legendaries are just decent, and some just don't quite make it into competitive decks, and then others are quite terrible. So one of the ones I really want to talk about, and we're going to do it first, is Spirit Singer Umbra. I saw people looking at this card and being like, whoa, instant death battle effects. It's like you can summon a Savannah High Main and get two hyenas in the same turn that you summon it, or something like that. And of course, people were thinking this would belong more in Priest, uh, where you have that other legendary Awaken the Makers, making kind of a death battle Priest deck. I uh, thinking that would be amazing and that would be what Priests would be playing. But in reality, it turned out that this card was pretty bad, uh, kind of as, as I originally predicted. Um, in my uh, card review videos, uh, where this card just is kind of too slow, it's too much mana to pay to get something like a death rattle effect. Most of the death rattles that currently exist aren't that amazingly powerful. Uh, they took out Sylvanas Windrunner for a reason. Uh, they were afraid that cards like this and that would be like, well, it's a 10 mana that gets you uh, instant mind control. And then a mind control later on as well as two minions, and maybe that would have been really good. But since it's no longer a combo, Spirit Singer Umbra just turned out to not really be that way. It's not another brand. It's nowhere near Grand Bronze Spirit and power level. Next up is the Marsh Queen, which I think surprises a lot of people out there because Queen Carnessa, and of course a 5 mana 8 8, that puts 15. 1 mana 3-2 draw card raptors as a battle cry, meaning you could chain up to 15 raptors in succession, only being limited by board space, and just have some insane late game in a one-drop hunter deck. But in reality, as it turned out, playing quests that require you to basically be rather aggressive aren't actually that great in practice, because to play the Marsh Queen, you have to sacrifice your turn 1, and turn 1 for Hunter decks currently is incredibly important, because you have cards like uh, the Tabby Cats, where turn 1 you summon 2 one, one Beasts, and then you follow that up with the Cackling Razor Maw, turn 2, 3-2, two, two, uh, adapt one of your current Beasts, and giving up that kind of synergy, giving up your first turn, often means that in a matchup between two Hunter decks, you would just lose flat out because you're giving away your turn one tempo. And on top of that, you have to play basically a deck mostly consisting of Hunter minions, uh, one drop Hunter minions, which in theory doesn't sound so bad because you have Tolvir Warden, right? Which is actually a pretty decent card, drawing two one cost minions from your deck. Uh, and then you even have cards like Raptor Hatchling, where you shuffle you shuffle a one mana four three Raptor into your deck. So one card becomes two cards, counting towards this Marsh Queen. Uh, but in reality, it just turned out Marsh Queen was too slow. Uh, just more basic contra decks that rely on early tempo and don't try to do anything fancy, way out competed them, uh, and it doesn't come close to what people were expecting. So next up, going back to the Priest Synergy, uh, Awaken the Makers. So this was a quest where you summon seven Death Rattle minions and then you get Amara, Warden of Hope, which is a 5 mana 8-8 eight, eight taunt. Uh, Battle Cry, set your hero's health to 40. And people were like, wow, it's like a Super Reno because you get 40 health instead of 30 health on top of a 5 mana 8-8 eight, eight taunt. That should be super good, and in theory it's kind of okay. But uh, once again, sacrificing your turn one, although lesser in uh, Priest, of course, um, not that great. It, actually, I think for Priest, it's more throwing away a card so that you can have a good card later on uh, does hurt them quite a bit. And on top of that, you have to play seven Death Rattle minions, which is very difficult. And on top of that, I'm more warning of hope. The effect to set your hero's health to 40 isn't actually that relevant in a lot of matchups. So what people will do is, if they see you playing an Awaken the Makers deck, which of course 100% obvious because you play a turn one, they will either rush you down before you can actually get her out. In most cases, a Priest deck that tries to be too gimmicky with a lot of Death Rattle cards is just going to get run over compared to a Priest deck that's just playing naturally good cards. 
Um, and then the other decks, the control decks, like a control paladin, it's just going to see, oh, you're playing Amara Warden of Help, you'll eventually get it out. So they just let you play it, and at the end of the day, it's like a delayed um, five mana, eight, eight. And really, it's six mana because you have to pay one to get the quest. So that 40 health doesn't really matter in control matchups, and you'll never get that 40 health against aggro decks. So basically, it's a deck that just loses against everything and um, isn't nearly as good as a lot of people were thinking. I, uh, I actually thought that this would be as bad as it is initially because, you know, just setting your health to 40 in a tempo-based game like current Hearthstone, it's just not that good. Um, okay. So next up, Lakari Sacrifice. This is one that surprised me a bit. It's another quest where you discard six cards, you get rewarded with Nether Portal. And uh, what Nether Portal is, uh, five mana, set up a permanent summoning portal on your board, which creates two 3-2 imps a turn. Uh, basically meaning you kind of have infinite minions and the same line of thinking as playing Jaraxxus, except that you have to be playing a discard deck and that the five mana to get out the nether portal is really slow on the turn you play it. So first off, discarding six cards and actually making a good deck is really hard to do because losing cards from your hand, it decreases your options. Um, Living the dream where you have Malkasar's Imp in play, where you just cycle cards instead of discarding and losing them permanently, isn't actually that realistic. So you have to sacrifice a lot of hand power, and you're going to have to life tap a lot in order to get this out. So what happens is that it's very obvious that uh, on which turn they're going to actually get the quest out, and then when they do play it, uh, the board is actually pretty vulnerable because five mana to summon two, three, two Imps in the mid to late game isn't actually that threatening. And uh, the deck has to life tap a lot, so, I mean, Warlock does in general. So it's actually pretty easy to defeat your opponent on the turn that they're going to play this, or the turn that they want to play this. And sometimes um, they'll have the portal in the hand, but they'll be unable to play it because they have to play so defensively. And uh, since the deck is a discard deck, it's not really meant for the late, 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 late game, so you can't get out the portal and live which means that your deck just falls apart because that's the whole gimmick of the deck. It's uh, not that good in practice. You have to pay way too much cost in order to get something good. Okay, next up, finally, un Unite the Murlocs. So uh, this card isn't actually super bad. Um, there's some potential there, but it didn't quite make an uber amazing deck. Um, as I think some people may have been hoping for, actually, I was kind of wanting Murloc decks to be kind of cool. Uh, so the idea here is you summon 10 Murlocs. It's actually not that hard to do. Uh, there's cards like... Uh, let's go back a set or two. So, Shaman cards, Murlocs, Colin the Finishers. If you put that in your deck, uh, two of these is already eight of those Murlocs. So in theory, it sounds pretty easy and uh, pretty good. Uh, because you get Megafin out, and Megafin refills your hand with additional Murlocs, so it's basically five mana draw somewhere between seven and uh, seven and ten Murlocs, which is crazy. Um, and sometimes you can get good Murlocs like War Leaders, which just synergizes with the rest of your deck. Most Murlocs do synergize with each other. That's the whole thing in Murlocs. Um, now, why doesn't it work in practice? I think uh, one reason is that you give up your turn one to play it. Uh, B, it's that if you shut down Murlocs, basically you keep the board clear of Murlocs, they're actually not very strong on their own. So a Unite the Murloc deck would probably beat people in the same way that just any generic aggro Murloc deck would, uh, where if you get the board, and if you get those war leaders in play, it can just scale out of control, and then on top of that, the Megafin can keep things going. And the hope is that um, even a control deck is going to run out of stuff to remove all of those Murlocs, because remember, you're drawing like seven to nine Murlocs, and sometimes that does end up being the case. It's not bad, um, it just hasn't been good enough to really make any competitive decks. Uh, so Megafin, really cool, maybe later on we'll see more play of this if uh, the next set has more Murloc cards for Shaman, but uh, actually the Murloc class this set ended up being Paladin, weirdly enough. Um, there are some Paladin decks running around, not only with Hydrologist, but um, with other Murloc cards in play. Uh, let's see if we can actually find that one. The Rock Pool Hunter was actually a really solid Murloc this set. And um, oddly, it can make a pretty decent early game for a class that's normally uh, playing kind of slow. I've even seen a few uh, pretty decent aggro Murloc decks, obviously not playing Prim Primal Fin Champion, um, because the quest sucks for them, the last Kaleidosaur, but 
that was never thought to be good anyway. So that's why that's not on the list. But in any case, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Five overrated legendaries from the uh, expansion set. So before we wrap up the video, I want to give one more honorable mention. And I may have been the only person who thought that Tyrantis would be pretty good, actually. Um, 10 mana, 12, 12 can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Obviously would be good with the Jungle Giants quest. But in reality, Tyrantis did turn out to be pretty underwhelming. Yeah, it's a big body, but that's all it really is. And usually if you have a deck that relies on you getting to a 10 mana card, and all it does is really be a big body, it doesn't come anywhere close to cards like Yogg-Saron or Death wing so it's actually not as good as i thought it would be but hey i was the only one who really thought that i think so okay that's gonna wrap it up for this video i've been dark skeleton thanks for watching and hopefully i'll see you guys in my future hearthstone content